Welcome to another hobby update, folks. This update is for the uh, projects I have completed in March. We're in a very windy and cold April just now in Scotland, but uh, I'll be keeping myself busy this month too. But looking at last month's, most of what I did was Luftwaffe ground forces. But I also started work on this project for 15mm bolt action. That's why everything is individually based. It's for somebody who doesn't have a lot of space, likes the bolt action game, so likes to play it in 50mm. And that's a good idea if you're short on space. Because these, they're at a scale where we can still see everything in good detail and they've still got all the character off the figures as well as just them being tokens in a game like you might um, you might use if you're playing even smaller scales you know they, they don't they just represent something as opposed to look like something interesting so this has got a lot of individual basing which is a bit of a chore and I certainly didn't spend any time on the bases by adding tufts and such likes because there's so many of them that would probably take an entire box um, of tufts to get them all looking right. And then one little thing of note is, let's get it in short, this is a flag, plastic flag, from a medieval sergeant's box set. I keep little bits and pieces from like spares, you know, from sprues. I've got little boxes of them all filled up with stuff because you never know what might come in handy. And there you go, there's a 15mm, um, sorry, a 28mm flag being used on a 15mm project and adding a nice bit of character, I'm sure you'll agree. There's various commanders. If you want to see how, how I paint my Soviets, I have got, I've got actually um, a bolt action painting guide with the Soviets are on it. Hopefully I'm adding to it soon. And I've got a Flames of War painting guide. You'll find that on the um, How to Paint Flames of War um, playlist. And you've, I've also said, I've also got, as I said, a 28mm bolt action, how to paint bolt action playlist. Now I mentioned Germans, or maybe I didn't, but uh, there are Germans getting painted just now for this project. Some of them are in camo, some of them are just in the normal tunics and uniforms. And I'm working through these guys quite well, making good progress. So there you go, there's a little bit of a different uh, project for me, but a very familiar scale. I've got all of the infantry options, infantry crude weapon and infantry um, platoons. So the first lot up here is from the box sets, two infantry platoons, company command and four Panzer Shrek teams. And then behind them you've got the mortars, both options come in the same blister and the heavy machine guns. So let's start there. See if I can get these into focus. There you go. Hopefully you can see the camo there. And get an idea for the detail on these figures. So these are the plastic, um, the thermal plastic. The battlefront I'm using now. I've got a video on the go for how I painted these. There is a video existing for how I painted the metal ones but I'm using, for a large part of this commission, I'm using a different camo scheme which I'll show you in a moment. But there's the heavy motor, looking really nice. And 
then oops, hopefully that's better. The medium water. Now you notice like the, the bipod legs on that. You just leave some shade colour in when you're painting it. And it doesn't look like a solid lump of plastic. Very simple thing to do to give a, a nice three dimensional finish. And there you look again, you can see the camel, camel pattern. So nice again. I quite like these to be honest, you know. Um, Sculpts can be good or bad regardless of the material that you're using. But these guys are not too bad at all. Every material has its compromises. It's a question of how you approach the compromises and what kind of outcome you get. And I think they've done a good job with these. Here's machine guns. And then, let's grab some infantry. Let me see. So. Hopefully it will come across here if I can actually get them a shot. The slightly different tones of camouflage used. See the guy at the front, he's got a lighter base colour and a darker green. And the video that I've got a talk that, I, uh, that I'm making about how to paint these guys goes into that in a bit of detail. But the, um, the mixture of camo types is good to help break up the large infantry units that we've got here. I would imagine this would be quite a powerful force on the battlefield. All of those shreks to go after tanks, lots and lots of bases to hold your ground. Trying once again. Get them into focus. And as you can see, there's, there's really good detail on these guys. And plenty of surface to get that camel painted. Invisible. But quite a nice looking force, I'm happy how it turned out. And that is the first half of the um, Luftwaffe ground forces that I've painted in March. Before we go any further, got to talk about the stash I've added to the stash this month. And by the stash I mean the pile of figures, box sets, etc. that I'm not going to be painting straight away. It's a pile of shame or a pile of future achievement. We shall see. First of all, this nice whole box set, the ages only relevant to the contents, it wasn't the age I, I got it for, but it will allow me to finish the infantry options that I need for my um, desert uh, Brits. It's also got lots of lovely, lovely resin vehicles as well, and I need that for my Brits. I've got resin vehicles for my Germans, um, half tracks and such like. I need some uh, British ones. And this bad boy that you can tell by the shininess it's nice and sealed. I've been after this for a while. I have bid twice on eBay for it. Not this particular one, but this box set. And in both occasions it went in excess of £50. And I was like, no, you can have it, guys. This I got for retail. So I'm very, very happy. Can't use these in version 4 in the game, but um, these are about a collection for me anyway. They are... As far as I'm concerned, lovely collectible box sets. The resin bases you get with these are just fantastic. Little dioramas. So this will be, at some point, being added to the How to Paint the Classics um, series of videos. So there you go, folks. Two additions to the pile of future achievement. So the final batch of Luftwaffe ground forces are some Hermann Goring or Luftwaffe Field Division 
with my infamous Luftwaffe blue. I call it my Bovro blue because you either love it or hate it. They are very blue, I will admit that, but this is so they stand out on the tabletop and they're clearly blue as opposed to very, very pale and looking like grey. And certainly the, um, the friend that I'm painting these for really likes them because he's gone for a complete um, formation, complete infantry formation. And this is like the, the remaining options that he needs. He's got lots of anti-tank guns, the infantry, grenadiers, um, heavy machine guns, mortars and so on. And there's, uh, there's some artillery options that he needs. So let's start off with, may as well start off with the heavy mortars. This is the old metal late war heavy mortar set. And then for version 4 it's got a commander with a radio operator. Let's try and lift it up a bit. So it's clear who the command base is. Now the, the trailer and the mortar itself are attached to the base using Vallejo Earth Effects. I'll just get that. If you haven't seen me using this before, not only do I use it to cover the bases, I also use it to attach things like guns because it is much more flexible than super glue. Things won't just pop off uh, and it's a really, really strong hold. You, you can break them off, but you'd have to want to break them off. And I've used them on these guns too. This is the old 10.5 centimetre artillery box set. And I have used the staff team, which is redundant in version 4. I used the staff team and one of the Kubo wagons to make a nice little objective marker. Which is really quite nice. Now there, are, there is a painting guide for the Herman Goring um, figures also on the 15mm uh, playlist if you want to check that out. Oh, uh, before I go away from you, you'll notice I added a bit of variety to these guys by painting some of them with just field grey tunics. And then talking about variety, we've got these guys here, and these are scouts, so they've all got submachine guns, or some of them have got Sturmgewehrs, but submachine guns, and I've given some of them field grey as well, and some of them have got uh, camo smocks. So that's a very attractive uh, list with lots of variation, uh, list attractive unit with lots of colour variations in them and it kind of suits the character of a scout platoon you know who are going to have lots of opportunity to scavenge and just get the equipment that they want so even some of them have got um, Soviet was it PPSH submachine guns so it's a very nice characterful unit and a nice addition to this uh, formation I've got one more unit to do, an artillery unit that no one's really going to, no German anyway, is going to leave home without, and that is Nebs. Now when I got this, it was in a sealed blister and I thought it was a mispack, because the crew supplied with it all had 15 centimeter artillery shells, uh, as opposed to Nebelwerfer shells. Um, but I, I saw another pack that had the exact same uh, selection in it and the rockets that come with the pack don't look like 15 centimetre nebs so I think it's uh, 30 centimetre nebs and they just didn't have or well, they didn't make 30 centimetre crew so just put in some 15 centimetre crewmen um, so to get these guys looking right because you know, it's an old metal box set, uh, sorry, blister, that you're not going to get again. I've made some 15 centimetre nebs that will look a bit better when they're painted, folks, you'll be able to get a better idea of the shape. 
but that's a 15 centimetre shell made into a 15 centimetre neb. And you can see I've, I've, I've hopefully you can see, you, you will when they're painted, I can see I've, I've made a, um, his hand again, you know, just so that, whoops, so that you can see them holding uh, the ends of the shells. And one other thing that was that, this was a, an actual mispack because it was missing the front half of the neb itself. And if you look at these guys, you will see a difference. This guy has got uh, the, the front of rockets showing and that one doesn't. What I did was I took the ammo tubes that came with the blister and uh, it was two in each. So I cut the fronts off and a filing bit of green stuff and some arrowdite. I've managed to use those ammo tubes to make a complete nebel wiffer. And these are the last things that I have to do for this batch. And that I think will be the end of that Herman Goring Luftwaffe Field Division project. So there you go folks. That's March's projects out of the way. Remember there's um, lots of still pictures of these guys on the Facebook page. So if you don't follow us on Facebook, go over and have a look. Thanks for watching folks. I'm already busy with March's projects, so I should have another update for you in a few weeks.